Hi, my name is Dr. John Paul Hatala, and I've spent my career not only working with uh, individuals that are trying to make the transition to the labor market, but conducted extensive research on what happens during that process. So through these videos, what I hope to share with you is an opportunity to look at some of the research-based evidence that help individuals make that transition. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the notion of a strategic job search. Really, what we're talking about here is being clear on what type of opportunities your clients or the individuals you're working with are looking for. What we're going to talk about throughout this video series is the notion of job A versus job B. Job A is essentially the ideal job that the individual is looking for, whereas job B are all the other opportunities that make that individual more competitive for their job A. In this economic climate, job A's are not always possible. That's just an unfortunate reality. So look, conducting a strategic job search is about identifying other opportunities, the job B, that can make them more competitive eventually. So they may want to look at things for developing competencies, developing skills and abilities, and so forth. So conducting this parallel job search is really important. Essentially what they're going to find in conducting a parallel job search is a greater number of opportunities. Uh, not only is that good in terms of increasing their chances of getting a job, but as they go after these types of opportunities, they'll be able to practice the things they need to do in order to be successful. This video series will walk you through, as a career practitioner, on how to effectively guide a job seeker or your client through a strategic job search process. And so what we've done to make the job search a more convenient and efficient process is introduce a new system called SnagPad. And SnagPad essentially is a job tracking system, if you will. Um, in an ideal situation, we'd want job seekers to stop what they're doing and step a couple of steps back so that they can think about how they can strategically position themselves for particular opportunities. And SnagPad allows them to do that from a self-directed perspective. What it also allows is practitioners like you to go in and see what the job seeker is actually doing when conducting the job search. And if you think about that, when you're working with a client one-on-one, -on -one, you typically meet with them in their office and they talk about a strategy in terms of what they're going to do in their job search. They go out and conduct the job search and they come back two weeks later. You don't have an opportunity to really have a window into what they're doing in the job search. SnagPad solves that issue by allowing you to access what they're doing in a real-time basis so that you can determine what's working and what's not. Once they've done, you've done the registration and they're able to log into the system, the first thing they're going to go through is a profile. And that's where they're going to indicate their job A and their job B, as well as indicate their location. Although SnagPad is not a job board, it does offer job opportunities. And when the user puts their address in there, it'll suggest possible job opportunities that make sense to them. The final step is to upload a resume or cover letter of their choice. It's a default resume. They'll be able to upload others as they go through the job search process, but it's important to get that default one in. Once they're done the profile, the next step is to complete two learning modules that can be found in the system itself. One is on social capital development or networking, and the other is strategic job search management, which goes through really the, the methodology of the process of making the transition to the labor market. After they're done with that module, basically they can start their job search process. And they'll either create a new job card, which is essentially a job posting, or they'll just manage their pad. And the pad is where their actual job cards go into the system so that they can visually see where they're at in the job search process. Creating a job card should come from jobs that are generated from the hidden job market, but again, can also come from online job boards. So there is a plug-in function that they can use within Firefox to surf the internet and look for opportunities. And that's whether it's from a job board or a career page on a company website. 
Within that job card, there are two components. One is more of a CRM component, where they can keep track of the position title, the company name, contacts, et cetera, et cetera. The other component is that strategies, as I was talking about earlier. So what we've identified in, in the research and what's obvious in a lot of cases with employers is that there's a hiring cycle. And in the hiring cycle, an employer decides that they need to hire somebody until that person actually starts. So we've integrated that process into SnagPad as the pad. So essentially there are six columns or six stages to that cycle. The first stage obviously being identifying the opportunity, then applying to the opportunity, getting a call for the interview, going on the interview, getting a verbal job offer, and actually getting the job. One thing that SnagPad has built into the system is the notion of challenges. And challenges are really small incremental steps that lead to the ultimate objective of the job seeker, which is ultimately the job. For example, setting up an account on Twitter or LinkedIn is a task that they can do. Why does this add to the strategic value of a job search? Well, it gets them in contact with potential targets that may help them with their job search. There's other components like the contact database and the documents that they can store. More importantly is the function of the calendar and the tasks that can be set by the client so that they are reminded of what needs to be done in their job search. One other thing that I'd like to mention that's really important in the job search is that SnagPad provides some structure to that process. It provides a daily email that goes out to the client in the morning reminding them of some of the things that they need to do. For example, uh, application deadlines that they have to meet, or interviews that they have to go on, or thank you letters that they have to send out. What we've identified in the research, or what are best practices, is looking at a ratio between the number of job A's identified to the number of job B's. And what we're finding is that it should be a ratio about one to three. That means for every job A identified, three job B's should be identified as well. What SnagPad does is actually track their activity with regards to the types of opportunities they're identifying. And it alerts you to notify that that ratio of one to three is out of whack. So if you notice that it's out of whack, you can simply connect with that job seeker and have a discussion on round, around what's going on with regards to uh, the job A's that they're looking for as well as the job B's. SnagPad has built into the system an online chat feature that will allow you to communicate directly with that client real time. In addition to that, there's an email function, so at any time you notice something that needs to be addressed, you can simply email them through SnagPad, gaining direct access to the client. One of the biggest tracking elements within SnagPad is what is referred to as OAI. And OAI stands for Opportunity, Applies, and Interviews. And essentially that mirrors what's on the pad. So the first column is Opportunity, the second column is Applied, and the fourth column is Interview. And ultimately when it comes to tracking job search performance, you want to look at what's the ratio between those three areas. So what are the opportunities to apply, then the applies to interviews. Essentially what that OAI becomes is a forecasting tool. So based on certain activity up front, it produces a certain output. So the example of 10, 6, and 1 really represents that in order to get one interview, I've got to identify 10 opportunities and apply to 6. SnagPad keeps track of that number automatically for the job seeker themselves. So they don't have to write it down, they don't have to record it. It's almost like a point and click type of effort within SnagPad that keeps track of that activity. How that becomes useful to you as a, uh, as a career practitioner is that you can see where things are happening that are not in keeping with a successful or a strategic job search.
So based on your OAI status in your Snagpad account, you had a 40, 20, and 1. Could you talk a bit about your, those 40 opportunities you identified? Yes, well, I did notice, as we talked before, from my hidden job market indicator that a lot of my opportunities had been found online. So I really wanted to try and identify opportunities from other sources um, over the past two weeks, uh, which worked out well, actually, because one of my challenges had asked me to reach out to new contacts, and I was able to find some opportunities through those new contacts that I made. Um, so I'm happy that now my hidden job market indicator shows that some of my opportunities are coming from different sources. One of the strategies within Snagpad, and actually the only one that's required by the job seeker, is determining whether or not the opportunity they're looking at is a job A or job B. When examining the job A, it's important for every job seeker to understand what knowledge, skills, and abilities are required for that position. It's critical that the job seeker know what the job is about. And the neat thing about the knowledge, skills, and abilities, which are essentially competencies, is the same language or same approach an employer uses to selecting candidates for the position. So an employer has an understanding of what behaviors need to be exhibited on the job. So when they're looking for candidates, they're going to ask those types of behavioral questions. So what Snagpad does is it prepares the job seeker up front to be able to look at what competencies are required for the particular opportunity that they're looking for in their job A. Built into Snagpad is a database of competencies for different types of positions. So what the system actually does is when the user enters their job A, it brings back a list of knowledge, skills, and abilities that allows that individual to rate them on a scale of one to five. One being I'm not competent at all, five being I'm fully competent in that particular area. This helps the practitioner in a couple of ways. One, it helps to prepare for the resume. Essentially, a resume is made up of not only tasks, but accomplishment, but behaviors that were exhibited in a particular position. And within Snagpad, bringing that knowledge, skills, and abilities does the work for them. The second component is the interview. When clients go out on interviews, in most cases, uh, employers are asking behavioral type questions or situational questions. For example, can you think of a, a conflict that you had in the past with a colleague and how you dealt with it and what was the outcome? By going through this ahead of time, it gets the client to think in advance in terms of what sort of things are going to approach them in the job search. And it, in fact, helps them to prepare. The second element to this whole thing of identifying the competencies is if they do decide to take a job B, they can think about how that job B could build on the gaps that they've identified in their competencies for their job A. So this means if they uh, don't have much experience in conflict resolution or being a, a collaborator, the job Bs that they do look for, they can make sure that they have those opportunities so they can enhance those skills. So down the road, when they, an opportunity presents itself for their job A and they're speaking to that employer and they're putting a resume and cover letter, they can use that experience to enhance uh, their position as well as make themselves more competitive against other candidates. So the benefit of looking at a job A, job B scenario is that it opens up the number of opportunities the client uh, can have access to. And from a networking perspective or accessing the hidden job market, this is really important because it just increases the number of opportunities they can look for. So instead of looking in one area of their network, they can look at multiple areas because of the different types of jobs that they're looking for. Remember, job B is a really critical component to a strategic job search. It builds on the skills that are necessary in order to be competitive for the job A. Also, from a resume perspective, if a client is able to link job Bs to job A opportunities, their resume looks a lot different because the employer is looking at consistency and continuity over the experience of that individual's career, if you will. When you're thinking about your clients or the individuals that you're working with, think about what level they're coming in. You have to keep in mind that Snagpad is in using technology and it's using the internet. So if an individual is not comfortable with the internet, obviously that may be problematic. That's not to say that that client doesn't necessarily have to get comfortable with the language or the approach and the methodology, it's just that they may not use it. On the other hand, when you think about digital literacy and how important that is in today's world of work, 
putting them on SnagPag could give them that confidence that they need to go out there and find a job with any type of employer that they may be looking for. But looking at the different level of job seeker is really critical to getting the most out of SnagPad. If you have somebody that's working part-time versus full-time or somebody that's new at the job search and looking for their first job or somebody that's been around for a while, it all has to factor in on how you introduce SnagPad to them. To get started with SnagPad for your job seeker, it's fairly straightforward. The first step is to obviously register them with an account, and this is done through the coaches panel. Up until this point, we've been focusing on the job seeker side and their account. Within SnagPad, there's a second level, which is the coach account. And the coach account basically shows all the information about what's going on with the clients that you're working with. When you first log into the system, what you'll see is a dashboard. And on the dashboard, there are a number of metrics. Anything from when your clients last logged in to the number of job opportunities they identified. And basically what you're looking at is the aggregate across all the clients you're dealing with. To drill down into individual clients, you just simply click on one of the boxes. SnagPad highlights key areas where there may be challenges with your clients. And basically what you'll see is an exclamation point, and it's a red exclamation point. And if you see those, uh, that means that attention needs to be directed towards those specific items. The four items that you'll be looking at where the exclamation point will appear are the last time there was a job card movement, the ratio between job A and job B, the OAIs, and how long the client has been in the system. The job card movement is really important because you want to know the last time an individual has moved a card, let's say, from an opportunity column to applied column, applied column to the set interview, et cetera, et cetera. If no movement is happening there, there may be an issue at play. So you may want to reach out through the online chat feature or the email function to see what's going on with the client. The second area is, as we spoke about before in detail, was the job A, job B ratio. If the ratio is out of whack, an exclamation point will present itself so you know that the ratio is not in keeping with what it should be based on best practices. And again, you can address that with the client. The third area is the OAI, and we've also built in a ratio or an algorithm that measures what is ideal in any given job search. And if that is out of whack, again, an exclamation point will appear, and you can address that with the client and talk about what's going on. The last column is the length of time that the client has been in the system. Typically what we've found for a job B, it can range from anywhere from 10 weeks to 15 weeks before success could be achieved. In addition to SnagPad, there are a number of different resources available through the project. Thank you for listening to this video, and remember, an effective job search is a strategic job search.